Before we get started, I'm legally required to tell you that this video is sponsored by Dropbox. However, I was not legally required to turn their logo into macaroni art, but I did that anyway. So quick backstory. About a year ago, I launched a crowdfunding campaign for a thing called the Everyday Calendar. I built the first prototype because I wanted to start meditating every day and I just kept on making these like grids and notebooks and like crossing out little boxes. And I thought, could I make something that has the same use case as that, but that has a more fun action than crossing out a box and that looks prettier. So my team and I put together a crowdfunding campaign. We raised almost $600,000, which is crazy. And we're just about to start shipping out the first calendars to backers, if everything goes to plan, which it never does. At least this project hasn't ruined my optimism. This is the first time that I've gone through trying to manufacture a product and yeah, I just wanted to tell you some of the things I've learned and some of the things that have surprised me and maybe some of the things that I've regretted. One of the things that really surprised me was that the funding goal for your campaign is kind of this like number that you just pull out of your butt. We were asking a bunch of people for advice and pretty much everyone told us that like your funding goal doesn't really have anything to do with how much money you need to bring your product to market. It's more just something that you want to make sure that you reach at an early point so you have something to celebrate but also because people are more prone to back projects that have already reached their funding goal. We set ours to $35,000 which was something we thought we would be able to reach at a fairly early stage. And I think we reached it at like 30 minutes, which is crazy. Or it was like 31. 31 minutes, very important. I'm worried that like talking about this stuff is just gonna make me sound like a ruthless, like calculating marketing person. But at the same time, telling people how you're calculating is probably the least calculating thing you can do. It's kind of like when I was a kid, one year, my New Year's resolution was that I was gonna become more mysterious. And the first thing I did was tell people that I was gonna be mysterious from now on. Asking people for money is terrifying. I feel guilty even just asking people to spend time watching a video that I made. Yeah, I feel guilty that you're spending time watching this right now. But just rest assured that I spent even more time making you this apologetic macaroni art. So asking people to spend $300 on a calendar was terrifying. Like it was so scary, especially because it was for a crowdfunding campaign. Cause it wasn't like we had shelves stocked with product that we were ready to ship out. Like we had a prototype and we were feeling fairly confident that we would be able to manufacture them and deliver on what we had promised, but you can't be sure. So people are not just spending their money, they're also spending their trust. And you can print more dollar bills but you cannot print more trust into this world. Trust, I was gonna say trust me, but don't, don't trust me. I mean, do trust, like, yeah, each to their own. The team that's worked on the Everyday Calendar is in seven different cities in three different continents. The sizes kind of fluctuated between two and nine people. And just making sure that like everyone is on the same page and not even in a metaphorical sense. Just that we're like in the same version of the same document at the same time, making updates in real time would have been such a logistical nightmare without Dropbox. Yeah, I don't know how we would have been able to go through a process like this without a collaborative hub like that. One of the things about developing and manufacturing a product is just that the process and the work changes so much throughout. Initially, it's a bunch of like sharing designs and inspiration boards, doing research on materials and parts. Then once you've decided kind of what you want your product to look like, you go into the engineering phase. Then there's a lot of schematics and board designs and code. And then when it comes to the crowdfunding campaign, it's all like copy text and design and video and scripts and then it's like backers and keeping track of where in the world they are and their t-shirt sizes while you're also adding part numbers to your bill of materials and having legal documents with your manufacturer. Like it's just constantly changing shape and size and Dropbox can follow you through every step of that process and that you can have everything collected in one place. It's kind of like this magical pair of pants that fits no matter the size of your business body. I don't know what a business body is. Next point, screw conference calls. I think you all know what I mean. No. Yeah, you go ahead. You can. 
I really regret the name. Everyday calendar? Every calendar is an everyday calendar and it doesn't even have every freaking day on it because sorry, February 29th. I wish I would have called it something like light up calendar and maybe I'll change the name at some point, but I just don't know when a good time to do that is. But everyday calendar, it's kind of like calling humans like skin humans. And you're like, yeah, the skin part was kind of already assumed. The last thing I want to mention is just how hard it is to estimate time. And it's this thing you know, like you know that you're probably going to underestimate and you add a bunch of extra time on top, but I feel like no matter how much time you give yourself, you're always going to need more. So we were supposed to ship our early birds in May, which we still haven't done, but people have been really good about it because we have like, I don't know, just the nicest, most understanding backers. And there's just this thing where it always feels like it's just three weeks away. And then you realize like, oh, it also felt like it was three weeks away five months ago. But our first batch of calendars is in transit from our factory in China to my workshop because I want to do last quality control myself. Just make sure everything looks okay and like hug the calendars goodbye and tell them how proud I am of them and maybe have like a fun last day at the beach. I am so excited to see the first batch of calendars and like fingers crossed that everything looks all right so we can actually ship them out to backers and uh, yeah, they're gonna arrive any day now. So let's like dip to black and jump cut to any day now because that's the benefit of, of watching a video of the process rather than living through it yourself. They're finally here in their final form. It just feels, I don't know, it's like one and a half years of work leading up to this. I'm nervous. Also, this is gonna be the most tedious unboxing video because it's just me unboxing the same thing like 150 to 200 times. Oh, hi. Hi, you little one. Look at that. Look at it, it's so pretty. It's honestly, I'm so like, I don't know. It's just a lot. Oh, it makes such a good sound. So one of the things that we did was add a reset function. So if you just hold January 1st, I think it's gonna be like 45 seconds, so. Look at that. And then it's a new year. You can just start again. Bop, 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 bop. So looking a bit closer at the frames, there are some fit and finish issues. Like there's a gap between the board and the frame and there's some problems with the corners. It's all the stuff I think a lot of people wouldn't care about, but like I care about it. And I just want to make sure that I set out something that I'm really proud of. And I don't know if that's something we could remedy here at the shop or if we need to send it back to the factory in China and like scrap some parts of this batch. But the boards look great. Like the circuit boards look great and they work great. And one of the things that we worked a lot on is making sure that there's not any light bleed in between the days. We have like a big foam insert with an insulating paper on top. So if September 6 was on, then like all the neighboring days would have a little bit of a shine. And this has just completely stopped that so that it's only the days that are lit up that that have any light in it. It was really pretty and I really like it. And we haven't had working prototypes here in a really long time. So it's just so, I don't know, it just makes me really proud. There's still a lot of work that we need to do. We need to check all of the units. We need to finalize packaging. We need to print packaging slips, but we're getting closer. And today was a really big step. I know a lot of you have been asking if the everyday calendar is gonna be available for purchase outside of the crowdfunding campaign. And it's definitely something that we're working towards. And I'll put a link in the description for where you can sign up and we'll notify you when they're available. Thank you so much to Dropbox for sponsoring this video and for helping keep all of our document ducks in a row. 
And also thank you so much to everybody who backed this project. I can't wait for you to get calendars in your hands because every day is everyday calendar day, except for February 29th. Okay, bye.